Hello, and welcome to my Out of the Park 24 long-term save. In this save, I'll be taking over as GM of the Detroit Tigers at the start of the 2023 MLB season. There are uh, several reasons I've chosen the Tigers. When I pick a team for my long-term save, I try to do something that's a bit different from my recent long-term saves in Out of the Park. So, you know, what do I make of the tig Tigers? Why do I think they're different? You know, I think they're a team that tried to exit and or accelerate the rebuild for the 2022 season by signing guys like Baez, Rodriguez, trading for Meadows, but it hasn't really worked out for them. Um, and, and I don't really want to criticize the Tigers for going out and spending money and it not working out because honestly, it's refreshing when teams go out and try to win and spend money uh, that might be deemed reckless or you know, risky, et cetera. Like, yes, Baez was a risky player, highly volatile player in terms of his outcomes. But like, and, and I know it's a little, it, the, the Orioles, my team did this. They went into a full rebuild and like, whatever, that works if you do it right. But it also just like kind of rules when teams do like what the Padres did and just try to win and spend a crazy amount of money to try to do it because baseball teams have a crazy amount of money to spend. And now the Tigers didn't go that hardcore, but I'm not going to sit here and criticize the moves they made by going out and trying to win because I love that they went out and tried to win and spent money, even if so far it has not worked out for them. Um, so this is, but this is, so this is not going to be a full rebuild, right? I think that this would more accurately be classified as like a, a retool on the fly. Uh, we're going to try to stay competitive here right off the bat, but I also got to acknowledge that the first season or two may be a bit of a transition. A quick 30-second plug here on supporting the channel, by the way. Uh, I've reopened my Patreon page. It's in the description of this video. There's more info there, but just quick info. There's one level. It's a $5 monthly donation to support the channel and the time and work that goes into it. There are not additional perks at this time like there have been previous to my Patreon, but it's just a way for you to support the channel if you're interested and you're able to do so. Thank you for listening. So how is this save different from the other saves? Uh, the, the rebuild I did in, or I guess I should say the save I did in Out of the Park 21 with the O's, that was, that was a full rebuild, right? The 22 with the Phillies was more of a win now build around Harper Sim. And then the Royals was more of a late stages rebuild where they had a, a few really big pieces in place. Uh, I, I think you could call them a small market team. So I think the Tigers are definitely in a different spot, a more precarious spot for sure than the Royals were when I took over the Royals in my out of the park 22 sim. So I, I do think this sim is going to be the ch a challenge um, and the way I'm approaching it is going to be a challenge. You know, I'm not just going to try to burn it down we can't accept like a full tank here. We have some pieces in place, but there are lots, a lot of holes on this roster, some contracts I don't like. Uh, and on top of that, you know, we're not in the smallest market here, but our budget is not like it was with the Phillies where I could afford to get, you know, a little, a little fast and loose with the money. Right. Uh, that, that's, that's not the case here in, in Detroit. I'll also play with some house rules uh, and settings that make it a little harder. I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Uh, another reason I chose the Tigers, it's my wife's favorite team. Um, she's not going to watch a single second of this video, but she was excited when I told her I'd pick the Tigers. Um, and she deserves nothing but excitement and happiness always. So, you know, I, uh, I have a wife, a young kid. She allows me the room and, and freedom to play a dumb computer game and, and take the time to put videos about it on the Internet. So, so thanks, wife, and, and go Tigers. All right, let's jump into this team. It's a bit of a mess, guys. It's a bit of a mess. Uh, here at catcher, we've got Eric Haas. Uh, I guess I'd be all right with him as a backup, maybe. I, I know, you know, I don't really know what the deal is with catcher ability in this sim, but not something that we as a community, I guess, you know, in general, I should say, because I don't want to overgeneralize and lump you in uh, if you don't want to be lumped in. But in general, I think people put less of an emphasis on catcher ability than we used to, but I still like it. I still prefer it to be like 60 or above, but Haas has a decent bat. Um, he can play some other positions. So I don't think he's going to be here when we in the world, win the world series in a few seasons, but he's here for now. And Sands, you know, I, I, I don't think his bats where we need to be. I don't think his defense is where we need to be. Glad he's a leader with work ethic and work ethic and intelligent. Love that. But I think he will probably be optioned here even before opening day. 
uh, and we'll call up Jake Rogers, who's just a better defensive catcher, still a leader, a better hitter. So I think Jake Rogers would be there. Now, in the future, got some hope for – oh, wait, he's hurt. I've got some hope for Dylan Dingler, uh, who, one, has an awesome name, and two, could be a major league catcher for us. We'll, we'll see. He's out to start the season in Double A. I haven't worked out my prospects yet where I'm going to put them all in terms of level and all that. And I'm not going to go too deep into prospects here, but we, you know, we have a decent outlook and catcher, I think, between Rogers and Dingler. It's, it's not like a, it's not a total wasteland. Let's get back to the major league club here. First base. So Miguel Cabrera uh, is is currently the starting first baseman. I should say this this roster that we're looking at and the lineups is is what it loads as in out of the park when you start a new standard game with the May 10th patch. This is not going to be our opening day lineup, but I want to go through the team as is and just show you show you where it's at and what we're thinking with it. Uh, Miggy, you know, this contract, I think it's what? It's two team options, right? And he said he's going to retire. We're, we're retiring Miggy after this season like he's going to in real life. Uh, and we're going to we're going to make this a, another team option. I'm going to edit it because I believe that's what it is in real life. So I'm I'm not gonna get rid of Miggy beyond that. I'm gonna I'm gonna honor him. I'm gonna keep him on the 26 man all season. He's gonna be there till the end. He's not gonna play every day, which is good because he only expects to be a bench player, which is nice. He's not even gonna complain about it. Thank you, Miggy. Um, he'll be he'll be on the team, and and maybe he'll run into some balls. You know, maybe he'll he'll put up a WRC plus higher than 74, but we'll see. Uh, second base, Zach McKinstry. I don't know if Zach. McKinstry is our second baseman that we need here as part of our retool. I think he's going to start as our second baseman. Ideally, I see him more as like a super utility left-handed uh, bench off the bat. So bench off the bat, bat off the bench. So McKinstry, I, I can see him hanging around for a bit, but maybe hopefully not in that um, prominent of a role. Like he's not a guy I necessarily want to give like 500 plus plate appearances to. Same thing with Ryan Kreidler. Uh, a decent guy to have around the 65 range. Can he play any outfield? He can. Uh, okay enough bat. He's a righty, so he would almost complement uh, McKinstry well as like lefty and righty utility bats off the bench. But I'd rather him not be our starting third baseman. We'll get to the bench bats like this Nick Maton guy, who you might know if you watch my Out of the Park 21s. And we'll get to him in a minute. Javier Baez. Oh, this is when it gets interesting, huh? So we've got a 70 range shortstop here. That's great. The bad news is he's 30. His bat has fallen off and he's under contract for five more seasons at a decent chunk of change. I don't think he's going to opt out. I would be shocked if he opted out. I also don't know if it makes sense to try to trade him because one will be eating salary and then we'll have to go out and spend money on a shortstop with 70 plus range. It's a very valuable thing. If his defense holds up, we're sticking with him for now. Like through like this season, I think he's our shortstop and we're going to see what happens just because, you know, by the time I eat salary, give up other assets for a team to take on his salary and then go out and find another 70 shortstop, whether that's through the free agency or giving up more assets. It's like, are we, are we really like, is that a net positive on the club? I don't know if it would be. So we might just Baez might just be our guy right now and we'll, we'll play it by ear from there. Let's see, where are we? We are on to Mr. Kerry Carpenter. Uh, he's another guy who seems seems like a useful player for us. I don't love the defense. I don't think he's an everyday player who I want in the lineup six to seven times per week. But I see him as a guy who we can use. Riley Green. You know, I think a lot of this sim is going to hinge on what guys like Green and Torque can do and whether that's they become middle of the order bats for us or they become trade chips for us where we bring in other pieces uh Riley Green's a really important guy and I'm not sure that he should be up on this club yet you know I I think you know I, I know I don't always go by overall rating and I tell you why I don't pay attention to it I think it does have some value this 50 out of 70 contact the power's not fully developed nothing's fully developed and is he's a 40 overall I think there's a good chance that he starts the season in AAA and just let him hopefully mash down there for like two months, develop, come up, and just crush it for us. That That's what I'd like to see for Riley Green. He's not going to be our center fielder. He's, he's He doesn't have the range for it. 
um, 60 range. You know, I, I am pretty excited. Oops, that's a, oh, here it is. I am pretty excited about Parker Meadows down here. I think he'll start the year in AAA as our center fielder, but this, uh, this 70 range, OSA says it's a 75 range center fielder with a decent bat. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he can get up to the show pretty soon and be a good center fielder for us for several seasons. But anyways, I digress. Back to the team. So we'll we'll see about Riley Green. I mean, he's obviously a hugely important piece to us soon this season. I just don't know that it's opening day. Austin Meadows, man, like I just need him to get back to 2021 Austin Meadows. Be 5 10% above league average with the bat. Play a decent right field. We'll call it a day. Uh, he's a leader. He's got good work ethic. I would really like uh, Austin Meadows to be a solid but unspectacular player on this team, and I think that's realistic. Right now in our DH spot is Nick Maton, who, as you may recall, in my out-of-the-park 21 sim for the O's, I traded for him as a prospect. I had never heard of the dude in 2021 or 22, whenever that was. Uh, he ended up putting up over six war in his rookie season. He won rookie of the year. I think he might've won MVP too. So I've got to keep him around. It's, you know, I'll move on from if it makes sense at some point, but he's on the team now in one, one form or another to start the sim. All right. What dudes haven't we talked about? We, I, I mentioned torque. We haven't, we haven't gone to him. We need to tor torque to develop either into a solid middle of the order bat, or we need to think about getting rid of him before his value totally tanks. Uh, which way is that going to go? I, I couldn't tell you, but I would say by next off season, it might be too late, but by next off season, we're going to have to make a decision on is Torque a guy we're building around or is Torque a guy that we're trading for pieces that we're going to try to build around. We'll see what happens. Jonathan Scope, no idea. I mean, you know, hey, O's fan here. I love Jonathan Scope. He's my guy, but I can't be paying $7.5 million to a guy who's... 54 WRC plus and 510 plate appearance last year. I don't see any future for him with the club. More on that later. Uh, who else have we not talked about here? Matt Veerling. Mm, you know, I appreciate that he's willing to try a bunch of different positions, some of them more effectively than others, but I don't see Matt Veerling sticking around much. He'll stay on the 40 man, I guess, for now. He's got an option here, but I don't see him really being a dude for us. So let's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get in, we'll get into, I know I mentioned some prospects here, like Meadows and Dingler. We'll get into prospects more throughout the sim, but that's, that's the hitting side of, of the team for now. Uh, so much work to be done, much work to be done, but we've got some pieces. We've got some pieces. So pitching side of thing, Alex Fado, uh, hate the extreme fly ball. I hate that anywhere, <laughs> but, but he's going to be part of rotation for now and, and, uh, just kind of do his thing, right? I don't, I don't see him as a piece we're building around. I don't see him as a piece that we need to move on from immediately. But if he has trade value at some point, we'll, we'll, we'll trade him. We'll trade him. He's got an option year left. We don't plan to use that right off the bat. We'll see what happens. Matthew Boyd, another fly ball pitcher with below average movement is, again, not something I love in any ballpark, even if Detroit's isn't like a huge homer ballpark. But Matthew Boyd is here. Ed, sorry, I keep bringing up that test bar accent. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez. <sighs> so in my short-term sims I've done in Out of the Park 24, Erod has had some really decent 2023 seasons, and he's been traded. Like he, I've seen multiple sims where he's been an all-star and put up like four war. Now, if he does that for us, I almost think we got to keep him around because if we trade, because we're not doing a full rebuild. If we trade him, we're then going to go out and need – a guy like Eduardo Rodriguez in our rotation. We need him to we need him to step up and live up to this contract. Will I consider trading him? Yes, but my hope is is that I you know, the roll of the dice here in this sim uh comes up Erod and then he can like be a really solid rotation piece for us for a couple seasons as we we try to try to turn this thing around. Garrett Hill uh you know, he's here. He's a guy. Uh if we once we more, I put my mark on this club over the course of the season. I don't really see him being a guy in our rotation, but he is for now. Spencer Turnbull is another guy who I've seen have decent success in my short-term saves. Love a ground ball pitcher. Love 60 movement. Let's go, Spencer. Let's do this thing. Just be like a decent number four or five starter, and we're good. Alex Lang. Yeah, man. This guy's going to be a, a rock star in our bullpen. Will I consider trading him if I can get 
something more impactful than a reliever, like an everyday center fielder, second baseman, a number two starter. Yeah, I will. But for now, he's our bullpen stud. Uh, Matt Whistler, extreme fly ball. Don't love it. Don't love it. He's here for now. He's a he's a guy from the old regime who I will probably eventually move on from. Matt Manning, we hope becomes a starting pitcher for us at some point, and he could. I I could put. I'm going to be controlling the lineups and the rotations here, and 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 he could be in there eventually. Maybe even at opening day. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, we, we need we need some of these arms to develop. We've got some good young arms. Matt Manning is one we really like to see become a solid rotation piece for us. Jason Foley. Love the movement and extreme ground ball. He's a dude who'll be around for a bit. Jason Shreve, uh, you know, he's here. Uh, Trey Wingenter, is that how you say it, Wingenter? Uh, former Padres legend, of course. Love the fastball and the slider and the stuff. Fly ball pitcher with average movement. Yeah, as you know, <laughs> I'm a broken record. I don't love that. But I think he's a decent bullpen arm for now. Oops, I'm not trying to change anything. Get out of here. Uh, Cisnero, love this movement. Control is a concern. His his walk numbers last year in Detroit were a concern. He's making two point two million. He's got an option year left. Mm, you know, I don't I don't I don't love this. I don't love uh, that he's not making league minimum when he's such a question mark. But uh, he's rolling in our bullpen for now. I will have to send down three of these pitchers because as you can see, we have sixteen players up here. Uh, Tyler Holton is a guy. Joey Wentz can hopefully develop into a rotation arm for us. That would be great. Uh, Tyler Alexander, uh, you know, he's around. He'll probably pitch some innings for us this year. Ty Madden is the number 48 prospect in baseball, just 23 years old. He's only had seven starts in double A. I think he'll start in the minors. Now, where will he start? Probably, I think probably triple A. We'll let him go down there pitch for a little bit and then when we need him up he'll uh he'll come up and lead us to the promised land that's my, that's my plan for time madden we do have a few i'll, I'll show you some a, a few quick prospects we have some interesting arms down here uh reese olsen at 23 has some really good pitches uh brant herder at 24 how do they get him again seventh round in 2021 i mean this control ground ball pitcher that slider like I've got I've got some hope here for Brant. Wilmer Flores, the number ninety six prospect in baseball, extreme ground ball, good movement, decent stuff in control, a few good pitches. I th we've got some, you know, we might not have a guy who's like, oh, this is going to be our number one starter, but we've got some guys who could be good major league pitchers for us. Then who knows? Maybe one of them's going to hit hit big. We also got Trevor Rosenthal down here and former Orioles legend uh, Brendan Hanafy. Hanafy. So that's some of the prospects. I'll I'll, uh, I'll show you a little conundrum that I've got here. <laughs> like, so the budget we've got ten million in total room, and we're like nine million short. This isn't even this draft budget that is allotted at the start screen is not even what our first pick, which is third overall, not even the slot amount for the third overall pick. So, you know, I'm not trying to cheese the game to where, like, I can just max out my player development budget, I can max out my international agent, but I would like to at least have the money available to afford my draft picks in the first season when I had no say over any of this. So here's what I'm going to do. It's I don't think it's too cheesy, and if you think it is, hey, cool. So I'm going to play on hard trade mode, all right? I am. I am not going to use the reputation system because I, I. I just. I just. It hasn't seemed to be working right. In what I. You get a bad reputation for just like things that shouldn't give you a bad reputation. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna respect the hard mode because I do think that makes trading way, way, way harder. I mean, if you have the patience, you can sit there for seven hours in what would normally take fifteen or twenty minutes without hard mode on. But I'm not going to do that. So trade. I'm not going to get max value on every trade. Because you can't sit there and just click buttons and like, hey, how about you take on five percent, ten percent? Hey, what about this prospect? Nope, it's gonna be it's gonna be much uh, much harder to find the maximum value in trades. But to get the money that I need to pay my draft picks, that's that's all I want to do. Pay my draft picks. I'm gonna use non hard trade mode to move on from the salary of Jonathan Scope and then a pitcher, probably Matt Boyd. I just don't think we need him. 
He's $10 million. Scope is like 7.5. I'm sure I'll have to eat some of their deals, but I'm going to use non hard trade mode for that to try to squeeze out every dollar of those deals. And then I'm going to not, and then I'm going to hard trade mode. But I also wanted to mention that we have some really good players on the IL. I mean, first of all, like our number one prospect, number 38 prospect in baseball, Jackson Job. Uh, he's out four to five months with a back injury. I can't, it's something, I feel like it's like a spine thing in real life. This says back stiffness. And I think he's out. I think his time frame was, I remember seeing three to six months. I think, I don't know if that's been updated in real life since like March, but I remember, seeing, I remember three to six month time frame on him. So that's a bummer. Cause he, this is a guy who, this is a guy. He, he could be a number one starter for us if he develops, but look at all these minor league injuries. But then some of these injuries are just brutal. Tariq Skubal is a guy who would be in our rotation. He's out for three months. Casey Mize, former number one pick. Yeah. Can he still be a stud in the majors? I don't know, man. Time's ticking. He's 25. Pitchers develop later. I think he still could be, but he's out with Tommy John. He's out for six months. So this season's basically lost for him. That's a bummer and a half. Michael Lorenzen will be back. He's going to be in our rotation, I guess, at 8.5 million. Maybe I'll trade him instead of Boyd uh, to get money off the books. One of the two will be gone. Garcia, he's fine. Bo Brisky, Brieski. Uh, he's a pitcher who will be in the minor leagues, would be my guess on him. Oh, Freddie Pacheco. He is out for two months with a sprained elbow, but looks like an interesting bullpen piece other than his dang extreme fly ball. That's a bummer. And Tyler Nevin, former Orioles legend, uh, just like a, a bench piece maybe. I think I think he's more of like, oh, he's out of option years. Yeah, I don't think he's going to stick around. He'll probably get DFA'd at some point. So I want to show you guys those injuries too. So that's kind of like the layout of the team as it is now. So I think the next move is find the trades for Boyd or Lorenzen and scope, get the budget right. And then, and then start to start to inch this roster towards opening day. And then another thing I'm going to do is basically replace all of my staff. <laughs> I'll keep AJ Hinch around. His relationships are good. That's good. I, I hate that he controls player strategy settings. I want to be able to control the pitch counts on my pitchers, which I can do because you can go in and lock them to their position. Um, so I'm going to be controlling it, but I hate that he takes me, makes me take that extra step. But A.J. Hinch is not going to be controlling my pitch counts because he's going to have guys out there for like 110 pitches, and I don't have time for that. Pitching coach Chris Fetter looks – everything looks good here. I mean, the, the pitching is decent, so they got to be higher, but Handel's development is legendary. Aging is excellent. But then his relationships are fair. Look at all these pitchers he just has poor relationships with. I mean, you hardly – doesn't he is worse than average with all but one pitcher we can't have that chris fetter is going to be gone michael berdar excellent at teaching hitting he's good at aging average at development he's average with relationships i could see us keeping him around he's a decent pitching coach we'll see what else is out there or hitting coach we'll see what else is out there scouting director mark connor uh international scouting decent that's that's enough to get the hook here i think Favor tools I like or highly favor tools. I love the excellent amateurs, but I need excellent or better at international scouting too. So Mark Connor is going to be getting the boot. Team trainer Ryan Eubanks. Uh, not There's too much yellow and red ink here. You know, I need more green and blue. Ryan Eubanks is going to be gone. So we'll update the coaching staff too. And, and I'll go through the minor league too. Uh, Maybe, especially for the guys who are around for more, I guess they're all signed through 2024. So I'm sure some of these guys are not going to pass the test. And I think minor league coaching is a really important piece of your minor league development. So I'll probably replace a bunch of those guys too. So that's those are the next steps for me, the coaching staff and figuring out those trades. So let's see what we can do with those things. We're now one day from opening day, March 29th. Lots of happening in Tigerland here up in Michigan. Let's go to the transaction log. I can I can show you what I did in terms of those trades. You know, there's some things in here we don't care about. But so again, I gave like I mentioned, I gave myself two like get out of jail free cards with contracts and allowed myself to kind of uh, tinker with the AI trading a bit. Like I didn't have hard trade mode on, so I just did it like I would used to, where I basically 
gave, you know, it's some give and take, you know, add 5% to the deal. What player will they take? Like all that, make this work now, all that stuff you can't do with the hard mode, which I'll be in for this sim, except for this. Uh, I did it here. So I traded scope, got rid of his whole salary. Uh, I got, I got rid of wind Genter, which is fine. Like he, he's probably a useful bullpen piece. Fly ball pitcher though. Uh, not great movement control can be questionable. Uh, OSA thinks it's even lower. So I, I was all right, giving up on, giving up on wind Genter. uh, Orioles legend, Brennan, Brennan Hanafi also gone. Uh, Will Kell Hernandez, a guy I didn't see a future for Zach Logue, uh, a guy who is 26 and I didn't see a future for. And then another former Orioles legend, Tyler Nevin, who I think is just basically a, a, a triple a player got rid of all of them to get rid of scope salary. They get, they gave me uh excuse me there. I have a cough drop and almost choked on it. Uh, I gave Zach Granke or they, so what happened was I, I shopped scope and Granke was one of the guys that was offered back. I figured, yes, I will force the Royals into making a bad trade with me since they fired me out of the park 23. Uh, they can take on scopes contract. They can hold on to 95% of Granke's contract and get back, back not much useful in return. So take that team that fired me. So Granky's here. He's in my bullpen as a long man right now. I don't, you know, I'm paying him like four hundred some thousand for the year. I don't really think he'll be there long, but he's there. I did fire a bunch of coaches. We'll get to who I hired. Then Matthew Boyd, who was making ten million again. I just needed more money freed up here because the just the way the budget was laid out was not was not really going to work. Uh, the the default settings when it came on so. There were a bunch of player for player trades that were decent. So then I shopped him for a prospect, just shopped Matthew Boyd one for one for any prospect, any position. And the Padres were the only team that offered me prospects. There were f five of them. They offered four of them were like 20 overalls, but then they also offered me Rosario here who is out for three months with a fractured ankle. That's a real life injury, but he's a, he's, not far from the major leagues. I think, you know, he's made the major leagues for the Padres in 2022, uh, 2023. I don't know if he's back yet or not, to be honest, um, as of the time of this recording, which will be different than the time that you watch it. Cause I'm, uh, I'm, this is, this is like May 20th is when I'm, when I'm saying this to you, but you guys will probably watch this several weeks later. Uh, so I don't, you know, I don't know if he's back playing anywhere right now as of May 20th, but I think, that he can be a useful infield piece. I'm not sure he's going to be, I mean, if he, he's only 23, so he could end up taking a step forward. Uh, but I think he's more of like a utility guy. He can play all, all three out or all, two outfield positions. He can play left and right. Then he can play second, third and short. So, I mean, he can basically play anywhere on the diamond except, uh, except catcher and center. And I don't love him at short. He wouldn't really play there much, but a useful player to have come back He's still got two option years left, so welcome to the fold, sir. I don't think that was a very smart deal for the Padres, but again, these were two kind of get-out-of-jail-free cards here to free up some money, which we've done. Pitching coach, we've got Brian Conger coming in, who I've used in previous sims. Look at this, Jim. Excellent at teaching pitching. Relationships are average, but they're, they're good with all the pitchers, so that's what we care about. Bench coach Matthew Johnson is in. Look at this legend here. Look at all those ratings. And then the, the headliner here is Bo Jackson will be our third base coach. How can you not bring in coach Bo Jackson, noted outfielder who is legendary at teaching, catching, and infield defense? That's funny. Uh, RJ Harrison is my scout. He's been my scout before. Highly favors tools. Excellent at amateurs. Excellent at international scouting. That's our dude. Uh, Rick Jamison is uh, now in to be our trainer. Love that he is excellent at preventing back injuries, which can be devastating hitters. Love that he is legendary at preventing arm injuries, which can be devastating to pitchers. Uh, so, yeah, he's a prevention-focused guy, not as good at rehabbing. And he's also he's outstanding at fatigue recovery, too, which we love to see. So, Rick Jamieson, welcome aboard. Thanks for joining us. Uh, oh, and I didn't do... You guys might have noticed this earlier when I had Hinch's profile up, but AJ Hinch... Here, I'll go to it this way does not allow me to pick my hitting coach. So I'm stuck with this guy who actually is excellent at teaching hitting. Like I don't love that. He's only average at development. Uh, you could find better relationships out there. It's not bad, but I, I don't, I don't dislike this hitting coach. I think he's decent, 
but I would rather have control of it. But you can see right now there, AJ Hinch hires the hitting coach. So basically if I need to hire a new hitting coach, if my offense is, is bad for an extended period of time, it's going to cost Hinch's job too. So he's sticking his neck out there for his pitching coach or hitting coach. Go for it, buddy. I made some roster moves. We'll get into that. Those, um, oh, what was this? Tra oh, right. I made this trade because why did I make this trade again? I, I felt like I needed a uh, – I don't remember how it came about, but I felt like I needed another arm in my bullpen, kind of like a setup guy type, high stuff guy, strikeout guy. The Rockies had Denelson Lamette on the trade block already. That's what it was. Did they eat any of his salary? They did. They ate 65%. So, you know, I'm paying him, like, what, like $2 million or something or a little less than that. And I sent back Jake Holton, who is a fine 25-year-old hitter. I think he's a triple A player probably, and he's got no positional home other than first base. Also gave up Chase Barbary, a 25 year old catcher who um, does not uh, out of the park, does not view favorably with their ratings. So Denelson Lamette is in our bullpen. I don't really know how it's going to work out, but we'll, we'll see. So what does the team look like now? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. Our depth chart is a little different between lefties and righties. So here, we'll just look at it this way. Uh, righties will go this is for opening day we'll go uh you know this will probably change but one day away so i think our roster moves are done we'll go meadows torkelson carpenter Baez, maton kreidler mckinstry we signed albert almora jr to a one-year 2.24 million dollar deal uh 70 outfield range filed under things we love to see is that 70 outfield range he's also a leader so Almora is in the fold as our everyday center fielder for his glove. And then Jake Rogers hitting ninth and doing the catching. Uh, on the on the left-handed side of things, uh, Maton comes out of the lineup. Carpenter goes into left. Miggy comes in as the DH. I think everybody else is the same there, right? Yeah. And, I mean, the, the order changes, but, but in terms of starters. And in, our other bench guys, Matt Veerling is like our fifth outfielder. He'll play a little bit, I guess. Akil Badu is like our fourth outfielder, I suppose. Decent player. Decent player. He's got a decent glove. Pretty good bat. Has not found uh, much success since 2021 in the majors, but hopefully he can he can rekindle some of that magic. Uh, I don't know why I have it on this default view, but I do. Got Nick Maton. By us, all these guys are in the lineup, like some in, as platoons. And then Jake Rogers is up as a catcher, and Eric Haas is the backup. So those those are our lineups. You can notice, notice Riley Green is down in the minors, like I talked about. I just think that's a better spot for him right now to uh, more fully develop his his uh, hitting skills. I think he'll be up soon. Like I just want to see him go down there and dominate for a month or two, and then I'll call him up. Pitching side of things. This is our rotation. We got Ed Eduardo Rodriguez, Spencer Turnbull, Alex Fiedo. Uh, you know, hopefully his extreme fly ball will play all right. We got Matt Manning in here, and we've got Joey Wentz, who we need to get on a pitch count, which uh, uh, what's his name? AJ Hinch only lets me control if I lock to team enable strategies. So we'll put Wentz at 85 pitches. The AI just doesn't pull guys fast enough. So this is one way that I manage that. It might help with injuries too. Uh, bullpen, Alex Lang, stud. Denelson Lamette, we already talked about. Miguel Del Pozo, he's, he's our lefty setup guy. Uh, not dominant, don't love the arm here in this spot, but he's a major league player. Jason Shreve in middle relief. We got Matt Whistler in middle relief. Jason Foley, extreme ground baller with extreme movement, extremely good movement. We love to see him in our bullpen. Zach Granke. Oh, I actually have him in middle relief. And I, I'm probably just going to say, like, avoid high leverage. Uh, so, and we want with these guys seventh or later. We're using Lang as a stopper. He's got a 35 stamina. He should be all right with that. But we'll probably, uh, we'll probably have him miss some, you know, if it's a back-to-back -back save game and he threw two innings the day before, uh, you know, he'll probably he'll probably hand some saves off to these two guys, but that's fine. Tyler Alexander will be our long guy out of the pen. So now we will uh, well, actually know what we're not going to hop to the prospects yet because I think they'll probably update the rankings when we get to opening day here. So I'll show you which prospects I'm tracking. We'll look at the season preview, uh, the predictions, all that. But this is this is your this is your opening day roster. I don't see anything changing here. I did think about change, uh, trading Michael Lorenzen to open up more budget space, uh, but I decided not to for now. I'm going to keep him around for a little bit. 
There were a couple deals, none that I loved. Uh, but Lorenzen, I think, will try to get rid of some of his salary at some point in the season here, just because uh, I don't think I don't think we need him with where we're at as a team right now. Uh, all right, so gonna skip ahead to day here and, and see what uh see what the MLB predictors think of our 2023 Detroit Tigers opening day 2023 March 30th. We're set to face the Rays. Tigers predicted to go 78 and 84, 12 games off the pace in the AL Central behind the Twins and the Guardians. Predicted to finish tied with our nemesis, the Kansas City Royals. 4.08 team ERA, really not bad. It really, this looks like a, a middle of the pack prediction here, which which we'll take. I think I think we'll take that kind of season as we're trying to, you know, as the buzzword goes retool on the fly let's look at our prospects and uh, and then i'll show you which ones that i'm controlling the promotion and demotion of jackson job our number one prospect here 61st overall in the majors he's out with the back injury for four months so what he'll be back like end of july not great not fun but uh yeah it's, uh, hopefully he'll he'll have a strong end to his season ty madden let me look at something here. Ty Madden is uh he's in AAA, number 78 prospect in baseball. He he was on the roster when you load the game, but he's never he's only had 7 inning or 7 starts in AA and he also is going to probably be pitching out of my bullpen. So I just wanted to get some starts in AAA. That's why he's there. Then got Colt Keith. Colt Keith is actually a real life top 100 prospect. MLB Pipeline put out <clears throat> updated rankings recently and he was Number two in the Tiger system and 87th overall. Looks like a potential stud here. Don't love him anywhere defensively with just the 45 range and the 60 arm. Could also stick him out in the outfield, but hopefully that bat will carry him because uh, he, he looks like a really good player. Uh, Wilmer Flores is uh, a, a good-looking, good, decent-looking prospect in AAA. And he's actually the Tigers' number four overall prospect, according to MLB Pipeline, in real life right now. Jace Jung getting hosed here. He's the uh, Tigers' number one overall prospect in real life, according to uh, MLB Pipeline, and 73rd overall in the top 100. Uh, looks like a, a decent enough player here and out of the park. He'll start in double A for us. And uh, I guess, you know, I guess he could play second base. I guess he can play third base. He could play some outfield. Uh, but hopefully that bat will will alleviate or lessen our defensive concerns. You can see we've got a good amount of pitching here. We talked about Madden and Flores. And by good amount of pitching, I mean that our, our better pitching prospects are towards the upper level of the minors. That's what I kind of meant when I said that. But So we've got some help coming. But now let's look at some guys that I am going to follow for diff one reason or another. Mainly, like, I thought the computer had them placed at the wrong level or, or they're just guys that I want to follow closely because I think they're they're important to our future. So I'll, I'll go down this list real quick and show you. So Isaac Pacheco, who in real life is not a top 100 prospect, just like in here, and he's the Tigers' 12th overall prospect according to MLB Pipeline. But this looks like a potential dude, man. Like, I mean, if this bat develops, he's only 20. He's going to start in high A out in West Michigan for the Whitecaps for us. Uh, he could he could play a few different places adequately. I feel like all all my guys are kind of like ah, I don't love them anywhere on the infield. I could put them in the corner outfield. <laughs> I think that's the story with Keith, uh, with Jung, but we'll see what happens with Pacheco. Pay Peyton Graham is real life number sixth overall prospect, and he looks like another guy who, if he develops, man, he's he could be really good. But he is twenty two and still a good ways from his ceiling so hopefully he can develop and be a be a dude for us the low work ethic here that oh, out of the park he's given him is a little concerning we talked about colt keith riley green of course he, he'll be up soon don't worry guys don't worry he'll be up soon chase jung we talked about andre lipschitz is an interesting looking guy here he is in real life the 20th overall prospect in the tiger system but this is a guy that I could see coming up and playing in the infield for us this year. Another guy that I don't love the 50 range, 
So then you think, well, could he play third base? I don't love the 55 arm at third base. Uh, I guess he could play some outfield for us, but he's not going to be a standout defensively. Parker Meadows is hopefully our future center fielder. He is starting the year in AAA. Uh, Kervin Castro, I don't think is ranked. I don't remember seeing him in like the top 20 MLB pipeline, but here for us, he looks like a really good future reliever for us. 35 stamina, they say he's a bullpen piece. I think you could start him if you wanted these three pitches and 35 stamina, or he could be like a stopper or a long man who just gets a ton of innings out of the bullpen. Dylan Dingler hopefully will come along and be a catcher for us on the Major League roster for an extended period on this sim. I think that's very far from a sure thing, but it's a possibility. Uh, Malloy is one of the top 10 prospects in the Tigers' real system. Uh, looks like uh, a guy who actually could play third base and can play decent outfield. So that's nice to have a guy who has a positional home. Uh, Gabe Work or Gage Workman, sorry, uh, is is a good looking good looking infielder. I think sixty five range. We'll take that. He could play second base for us. He could even fake it at shortstop if we need him to, and he can play in the outfield ish. So he'll develop some more positions. Miguel Aparicio is an outfield prospect who will start the year in triple A or double A, sorry. Uh, at Abel Bastidas is a player who the computer had it like high A. And I mean, I think he's a decent looking prospect. I didn't like that, uh, but I like his 65 range. So I, I demoted him down to Florida Complex League and, and he'll play there. Where were we? Jesus Bolivar. I, I like, I like where this guy's going. Roddy De Los Santos is another guy, you know, he could probably play second base, I guess, if he develops. But if this bat comes along, we'll be much happier just sticking him anywhere. Wil Wilmer Flores is one of the AAA pitching prospects, as is Brant Herter, another one of those AAA pitching prospects who I think could come up and pitch for us soon. Ty Madden we talked about. Christian Santana is – he's – a real life Tigers prospect, but for some reason was signed to an independent league team in this. I'm not sure why. He started the game as a free agent, and then he got signed. So I purchased him for two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I don't know if he's going to go anywhere. You know, the low gap power and low, uh, isn't a huge concern. The avoid K's could be, but he's if he can develop the eye, develop the contact, he he could be a future major leaguer for us. Tyler Statler. So I signed him as a free agent. He was out there. I, you know, when you open the game, it was like March 15th, and there were a good amount of very useful prospects out there. So what I did was I gave the AI like, I think like 10 days, like I think through like March 25th or something. I was like, I'm not going to touch anybody. Let the AI, AI get a bunch of guys. And they did. They got a bunch of solid guys that I was hoping I was going to sign. But Tyler Statler is a decent enough looking bullpen arm that uh, I grabbed him, and he'll start the year in high A as a 21-year-old. And then we've got Sawyer Gibson Long, which is a fun name. And Sawyer is a pitcher who will start the year in double A for us. So those are the prospects that right now I have locked their level that I'll be managing promotions and demotions for. It's not necessarily all the top prospects, but like I said, you know, there are different reasons for different guys added here. So that is your opening day uh Tigers, your opening day overview of the minor league system. And we're going to maybe just play a, a week of games here and see how the team does and, and then uh, get on our merry little way here of, of, of going deep into this Tiger sim. So the opening weekend against the Rays in Tampa didn't go well for us. Plus the first game of the season in Tampa, 8-1. Our one run came on a home run by Jake Rogers, Eduardo, uh, not a great outing. Five hits, five walks across four and two thirds, four runs, three earned. Austin Meadows made the only error, so I guess that's where the uh, unearned run came from. Zach Greinke, inning and two thirds, three runs. He's not going to stick around long with that. Tyler Alexander, uh, pitching inning and two thirds. We then had Friday off, and we Saturday. Marched right back into uh, Tampa and lost seven to two. Spencer Turnbull gave up eleven hits, two walks, six runs across three and two thirds. Did not strike out a batter. Uh, Alexander pitched again. Matt Whistler. We got RBI from Nick Maton. Had a bases loaded double with two outs in the ninth to 
ruin the shutout. Way to go, Nick Maton. I appreciate you. On your way to being an MVP again already. And then on Sunday, in the final game of the series, we fell 3-2. to two. Albert Almora Jr. had a home run to drive in a run. Jake Rogers also had an RBI on a sack fly. Alex Fiedo went five and a third, gave up three runs. So we finally got like a decent starting pitching effort here. And then Jake Foley, is it Jake Foley, right? Oh, Jason Foley uh, pitched two and two thirds of shutout ball. So that, you know, not a good opening weekend, but hey, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. This is this season. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm hoping to make some changes throughout the season to set this team up to win uh, over the next couple of seasons on our, our retool, our 2023 retool. Now, I did say I was going to get into a few of the basic game settings that I play with for this I, I have a longer video on game set deeper dive on game settings that some of you might have seen you can go watch if you want a deeper dive uh, but also the house rules that I play with there are a few I mean some of them are not like concrete like just in terms of you know if there's a at the trade when I'm trading like and it's in say July and there are players on the trade block like which there already are right now. Right now, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't police myself too much on this. But like, say a team is in first place and they're trading away like one of their better players just because he's on the last year of his contract. I probably won't trade for that guy. Um, more times than not, I I won't. I won't say I never will, but but I, I probably won't be doing that. And when it comes to the waiver wire, I only claim players twenty five years and older. The reason is. And it's normally in the off season. Like Jose Suarez, I'd, I'd take. He's 25, so free, fair game. Uh, but so, it's, it's especially in the off season, the AI will sometimes put guys on their 40 man and then take them off who are like 21 and decent prospects. I, I don't, I don't go for all that. How's Nick Gordon doing these days? Nick Gordon's like a interesting enough player that I would consider claiming him. I guess the the Twins are just too stacked. Uh, so yeah, so I, I don't claim players off the wave wire that are younger than 25. It's the same thing with the rule five draft. Cause I think if you play the game, you know, at the rule five draft, there are prospects out there who should not be left unprotected and they really go unclaimed uh, a lot of times, but young, young players. So I put the same age limit on the rule five, 25 or older for me to claim you in the rule five. Uh, there are some other house rules, but those are some of the like more concrete ones. In terms of the settings that I'm playing with, let me just think about... I don't have owner goals on. Uh, let me just think about what would be the interesting ones that are relevant to like how this sim will go. I did short-term injury is high. Long-term injury is normal. And every, uh, batter aging speed, I bumped down to 0.95. Development speed, 1.05. Pitcher aging speed, 0.95, and pitcher development speed, I left alone. TCR, I left alone. Uh, AI settings, I left the trade difficulty and preferences alone for now. I think it seems all right in this year's version. I don't know. Your mileage may vary. Maybe you like it harder. But really, since they overhauled the trade engine in like 22, I think, I think it was, out of the park 22, really, like I find the default trade settings to be pretty decent. And especially with hard mode. You know, hard mode is, a, I think, a serious... Uh, uh, adds a serious degree of difficulty. I like I like this hard. Oh, why isn't it on? Oh, because I was making those trades with the with the dudes with Granky and all that. Uh, so I will have that on, which makes the game I think significantly harder because one of the ways that I kind of uh, <laughs> wore down the AI and and develop teams was just making sure to squeeze every ounce of value out of every trade. But not gonna be able to do that now. Trade deadline uh, time limit will be six minutes. I changed my play, uh, player evaluation AI settings. You can see them here if you're nerdy into them like me. Saber metric lineups. League settings. Da, da, da. I didn't change much. I changed the draft to June because I like the draft in June. So my players can have a full year rookie ball. And I can kind of know how much money I spend at the draft as the trade deadline gets closer. I uh, allow the trading of injured players because I think that's fine to do. And let's see, I didn't change anything else there. Trade deadline's still the same way. Financials, fine. I turned off everything except team location and team nickname change in terms of the evolution 
because I almost always undo that stuff. I am going to expand the league. I think after this season, I will expand the league and realign. If not after this season, definitely some point soon. Players, I turned international uh, amateur free agents all the way up. I turned it from 120 to 240. Let's get as many of them in there as we can. So, But because of that, I turned down the international scouting discoveries to two per year of teams just like lucking into guys. Well, I guess that's to do with how good your scout is, but it turned that way down. So almost all the international free agents will come through this signing period. So not you know if you want to buy multiple lottery tickets you're going to have to watch how much you spend on the top guys uh, international free agents uh, established f- uh, five per year so i might just turn that off i don't know and everything here i think i left the same i thought about turning up the hook for the starting pitcher uh i thought about changing stealing i know spore watching your uh, Rockies one the other day and uh, he turned it up which I think is smart and very reasonable because of the fact that there's so much more stealing in the majors this year. So I'll leave that alone for now. I might tweak it. Let me know what you guys think on that one. But those are the basic settings and these are your 0-3 Detroit Tigers. There's more to come. Uh, wait, why did my total money available go down to 14? What happened? We were at uh, we were at twenty. Oh, 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 oh! Right, all these dudes got added to the, to the forty man. Yeah, we're gonna need to trade Michael Lorenzen to free up money because I only have fourteen million, and that's I zeroed out. Like uh, those of you who watched my channel for a while know, I zero out this draft budget, international free agent. So that counts the money. I need this money to spend on that, and then I need some money, you know, some flexibility here. So yeah, I'm gonna have to trade Michael Lorenzen, but more to come. Uh, here in our Tigers long-term sim. This is just the first video. Thank you guys for watching and uh, talk to you next time.